the best work I can do. And to do that, I have to challenge my expectations of myself and uh, and challenge my readers' expectations. And fortunately, my readers have been very gracious in giving me the space to tell this story and in allowing me the opportunity to, to finish it and to see how, what I was going to do with it and trust me to do that. I don't think anybody showed more faith, though, than Kansas State University Press. Uh, I went there about two years ago, and very much like tonight, was standing there waving my hands around, so I was trying to explain the story I was going to tell. And uh, I, uh, I explained how, what was happening, and I went through the whole thing and got to the end of it and said, uh, and so would you like to publish this? And they said yes. Was uh, showed me two things. I had graduated from Kent, and it, it one, it showed me that they had a lot of faith in me, and two, that they had never bothered to go and check the transcripts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Actually, I mentioned that to one of my editors, and she said, uh, "No, no, no. We have found out there is a direct inverse correlation there. Uh, the worse the grades." I can unequivocally tell you this is one outstanding book that a lot of you are holding to me. Um, just a couple other quick things about the book. Um, so other people don't have to go through the horrifying experience of going on eBay and trying to buy their own book back and just would be your own book. But to get the first Lisa story, it's included. The first half of this book, uh, the editors of Kent wanted to include the previous book. Uh, the second half of the other shoe is all the new material that's been running since then. One other amazing thing that's uh, kind of cropped up is that uh, university hospitals back in Cleveland, the people that at the Ireland Cancer Center, are going to be donating, uh, have created a Lisa's Legacy Fund. And I'm going to be donating, and King Features, my syndicator, is going to be donating all of the royalties uh, to the Lisa Legacy Fund. So all the royalties we're getting will be going for cancer research and education. Uh, I think it's phenomenal to be <laughs> I've the biggest smile on my face since uh, they came up with the idea. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor for a storyteller to be able to help in some way the people who are going to be telling the real stories. Um, and so I guess that brings us around uh, to the, the final thing of you know, what I started with, fame and fortune. Uh, hopefully, a fortune will be going into Lisa's Legacy Fund and then doing some good in the real world. Uh, the fame, I'm going to keep for me, uh, so that when I'm back in my attic, I can share it again with my imaginary friends. So thank you very much. I appreciate all of you coming out for me. We have time to do a few questions, so I'd like to just uh, take a few. Yes, back there. I taught in a junior high. No, no, I wasn't a band director. I wasn't a band director. I wasn't a school bus driver. I, I taught arts. I taught arts. Yes. You know, yeah, I, well, for 25 years, I was about, the deadline was about six weeks or so a year ahead. Uh, back around 1994, I started working to get a year ahead on Funky. And so, uh, up until this last month, I was a year ahead on Funky. <laughs> I'm falling behind as we stand here right now. But, uh, so that's kind of like the word I'd like to, you know, be with the script. Uh, yes? I think that... Well, thank you. He said he liked the strip where Lisa had to put on the wig to, uh, to get videotaped when she was making the videos uh, for summer. I tried not to be too pedantic in the creation of this work, um, but that was one op place where I took an opportunity because I, when Lisa was making the video for her daughter, I had her. I wanted to say something about early detection because it was so key for me. And so she tells her daughter to get regular medical checkups uh, so that she can, hopefully, if she's going to catch something, catch it very early. Uh, so that was a, a strip I was happy with. Yes? Um, how do you handle the time shift, really? You know, I, you, ten years ahead, that's a, that's a lot of going on. Does the day-to-day -day stuff, does that affect, does that change things? You know, it, when I first did the time, sh the time jump back around 1993 or 1992, something like that, um, we have a little dancing in the book. <laughs> All the shows going on. Um, I, I, I sort of just sort of backdated it and then brought them right into the present day. 
I, because I have a, a character in the Iraq War, it kind of time stamps the work a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm going to just kind of fudge it a little bit. I'm going to kind of let it go along and eventually hope everybody forgets. <laughs> and then I'll just kind of make it contemporary, but it's not science fiction. I'm not going to be trying to predict things, you know, on the road. Yes. Yes, I've been interested in some of the things that you've said about Lisa and about how she became real and almost started to write herself. Can you uh, go into a little bit about how that process took place? She asked about how Lisa started to write herself. I don't know, this character has been the one who, she's just been a very good character for me. Um, and when you get a character like this, they start to suggest where things should go. And uh, I knew that when I went into this story the second time, I was going to take it to the ending that I did because uh, I knew this character could do it, she had the strength to do it, and it's almost like the character wanted to uh, wanted to take me there, you know, and take me through that work. So, uh, yes. What you just said is that how Les became like the main character? Uh, Les became the main character when? Yeah, probably. Yeah. When the strip started, you know, uh, Funky was sort of, he's, he's kind of like the main con, and everybody kind of, he was sort of a straight man for everybody, because it was a gag a day, and uh, so the other characters developed, you know, they became a little more rounded and a little more fully developed, uh, and it was only recently, you know, that Funky, and especially after this next time, jumps, Funky gets to, you get to see his character developing uh, even more. I don't know how, you want to just... Okay, we'll take about maybe two or three two or three more questions. Uh, you had your hand up in the book. Lisa's is the creation of a whole number of women. Uh, whenever I saw a strong character trait in a woman, I would, you know, borrow it from Lisa. And so Lisa got the best of everybody, starting with my wife. Uh, I took her strength and used that. Um, and the strength of the, the young girl that I, who I was uh, going to her chemo sessions with. She was an amazing person. And uh, all of those things combined to create Lisa. She wasn't based on one particular person, although my wife probably gets a good, good chunk of credit for that. Thank you. Well, I I, uh, I I respect your taste too much to argue with <laughs> you. Thank you very much. Yes. I can't question. Comment being made, I think it's a very good thing. It's a 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 good thing. Funky was always designed uh, so that you could break it up into the different patterns. You can take the you can take the, the logo panel off of Funky Winker Bean, um, which I hate I hate that because it's, it's got the title there. Even though the title has been a blessing in my purse. I mean, to be honest, if I'd have known I was going to be doing this 35 years later, I'd have spent more time on that. You know, <laughs> but sometimes they can take that first panel off or the whole top row. Uh, and then run the bottom is just as hard they can run it as a vertical, or I suppose if they wanted to, they could put it in all four corners, uh, you know, of the page. That might work too. Uh, I tend to make it hard for them occasionally because I like to use it. I think the Sunday strip is is, uh, is this is a great American art form. This is one of the great show places for it. So I try to use sometimes use the whole strip, which makes it very hard for them to to uh, mess around with that. But yeah, it was designed to do that. Absolutely. The jump ball. <laughs> I'll take the lady in the front here. I'm sorry, she's. Yeah, it it all gets answered. When I left home, there were uh, a lot of people. What I've done, if you go to my website now, you'll see the uh, the older the characters after the tie jump. You see what they look like, a little bit of bio about them, and Wally's not there and it's led a lot of people to jump to some conclusions about this. 
And once again, I need people, I need my readers to just give you the space to tell a story. It doesn't necessarily, it isn't necessarily what you think it is. Um, and I'm not saying what it is right now. <laughs> yeah, don't do it to me. Uh, yeah, but don't, don't freak out. He's not there. Also, also, Wally Jr.'s not there. Wally Jr., I can tell you why Wally Jr.'s not there. I can explain that now. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Too many characters. <laughs> Wally's not there on purpose. There's a plan. It, you may not see it right away. It only took me 20 years to get Darren and Lisa together. So, you know, it, I'm a, it's, it's, it's called writing. <laughs> so I need the time to do that. So that's what's fun. That's a good place to end this. You, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. I hope to talk to you.